happened again. The Artemis 1 moon rocket facing another round of setbacks and delays. NASA is calling off the next launch opportunity, which was planned for Tuesday because of the possibility of bad weather. We've got Hurricane Ian heading this way. This is just the latest roadblock for the historic program that's already had plans to usher in a new era in space exploration. So for more on this, joining me now live is space history curator at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, Teasel Muir Harmony. Teasel, thanks so much for joining us. Okay, so Artemis scrapped a third time, this time over weather. This has got to be such a huge disappointment for NASA and not a really good PR moment for them right now. It is, a, it is a disappointment. Um, we're all very excited to see the, the rocket launch, the mission um, be a great success. But I also think that NASA is doing a, a wonderful job in making sure that um, the mission will be a success by, by delaying it, not, not risking the effects of weather on the launch and um, with earlier launch delays, also ensuring that everything would go well. So um, it's also something that NASA has experience with. Uh, rocket uh, launches tend to be delayed. So uh, back with the space shuttle program, there were 135 missions and 121 of those were delayed. So um, this is familiar territory uh, when it comes to getting to space. It's familiar, but it is is quite expensive. If we can pull up, um, each launch runs about $4 billion. Um, this is already years late. It's way over budget. What is it costing every time it fails to launch? I don't know the exact numbers of um, the, the delays, but I think it's folded into those numbers. I, um, it is it is a very expensive endeavor, and that's part of the reason that NASA's um, deciding to delay it as opposed to launching it when, when everything is not perfect. And so the investment. Um, it is, in the long run, it makes more sense to, um, to delay the mission until we know that it'll be a success. Um, so, you, and I, but I believe that that is folded into those about $4 billion okay. per launch. Teasel, what do you say to critics out there who say, look, there are private companies out there that are already leaps and bounds ahead in space uh, exploration. When SpaceX's Starship perhaps comes online, it's going to cost less. It's going to be able to do more. Isn't SLS then just a huge waste of time? So SLS has been um, in the planning stages for, for over a decade now. It's something that we've invested in um, a long time ago and have been working on. And it's really exciting to see new capability coming up. Um, and, and hopefully those the launch next launch for, um, for SpaceX will be a success. Um, everyone's very excited about Starship as well. So the, the more um, opportunities we have, the more vehicles we have to launch humans and um, and cargo uh, into space, the better. And I think that um, SLS is going to provide some incredible capability, um, capability that we haven't seen in decades. And um, uh, but I think it's also it's an exciting time for space because there is so much activity because you have companies like SpaceX also developing heavy lift rockets. Well, I guess my question then is, you know, I know this is hugely important because this is the first step in getting man to Mars. I get that aspect of it, but I guess sell it to us for folks out there that are watching this now delayed one more time. Um, they know that it's over budget. They know it's already so many years late. Is this really going to be worth the cost and worth the wait? Uh, it's, it's a hard question, and there's um, there's a lot of debate on both sides. Uh, but it has been a national priority for many years, and. One thing that's exciting about the Artemis program is that it has been a priority for multiple presidential administrations, which is not always something you see in space exploration. So this was a program that was started um, under the Trump administration and it's continued under the Biden administration. And it's nice to see that, that continuity that allows us to do much more in space when we have that continued support. Um, but it is also important to put the cost of the program into context and, and what else the United States invests in our, our, our other um, priorities. And, and NASA's total budget is about half a percent of the federal budget. It's, um, it's not nearly as significant as it was back in the 1960s when we were sending humans to the moon with the Apollo program, when the budget was over 4% of the, the federal budget. And so um, it, is, it is expensive, um, but it is building up important capability. It'll contribute to science. And, um, and as we've seen from other space programs, there are also many other positive effects that come from spaceflight.
Yeah, 53 billion is a is a tough pill to swallow, especially as we are still waiting for this thing to take lift off. Um, Teasel, thanks so much for joining us and your insight. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.